we can start talking a little bit about how you got into conservation starting maybe even in childhood or at the undergraduate level um, and how you decided that this was your calling, this was your passion um, and how you got into the field. I started my career in environmental conservation after failing in a for-profit career that I thought I really wanted. And my message to anyone who's trying to decide what to major in or what to focus on as an undergrad is it's impossible to know exactly what your path will look like, but it is possible to know what inspires you and what brings you to life and what excites you. And so as an undergraduate, I really wanted to pursue writing. I loved language. I loved poetry and fiction and essays. I, I would write anything and I loved the student newspaper. So I thought, well, that, that could be something, right? I could be a reporter. And another part of me loved art and art history. So I pursued that. Uh, I was absolutely obsessed with the French language and wanted to study in France. So I pursued that. And I started getting questions from older people, especially, you know, adults who would say, well, what are you going to do with all that? And I just was convinced that it would all come into fruition and be useful at some point. And even though I probably couldn't explain exactly how, I knew that being able to articulate myself, speak another language, work in another culture, pursue beauty, pursue the understanding of the human condition, would be useful. But I didn't know when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, I didn't know that environmental conservation was going to be my true calling. And so I think what you do as an undergrad matters and doesn't matter just as equally. You might pursue economics as an undergraduate or chemistry or physics or some liberal arts degree and, and yet later in life be doing something quite different. But all the skill sets and all of the tools and all of the modes of approaching a problem or problem solving or research or putting your thoughts into a term paper actually do help you in real life. And don't let anyone tell you they don't because the number one skill that I need on my team is someone who's able to take a concept and translate it into a compelling proposal or a compelling idea or explain it in marketing. Being able to articulate an idea is actually a really killer skill set. So if you have a liberal arts degree or you're thinking of pursuing one, it will come in handy. If you're a scientist, of course that will come in handy. Our world needs scientists as well. And so the undergraduate journey might not make a lot of sense to other people, but for me, it absolutely made me happy, fulfilled. I can talk to a lot of different kinds of people. And yes, I still speak French and I've even used French in my work. I had a donor to the San Francisco Zoological Society whose partner died. And he said to me, my partner really loved the French language and gorillas. Can you write a poem about that for me? And I said, well, surely you want a great French poet to do that. Um, can't we just find another famous French poet? And he said, no, I want you to write it. So I wrote a poem about gorillas and you can still see that poem over in Gorilla World uh, in, at the San Francisco Zoo today. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What are, in your opinion, the pros and cons of going to graduate school for someone who wants to do conservation work? So I will make a full admission and confession here that I did not go to graduate school, and I'll tell you why. I couldn't get in. I wanted to do a creative writing degree and get a master's in fine arts, and getting into those programs is really competitive. Uh, finally, I did get into two different programs, and by that point, I had gotten further along in my career, and I realized, huh, if I go to graduate school now, I'm actually going to go into a huge amount of debt. So I think the biggest question is, is it absolutely necessary for what you're trying to do? If you're going into environmental conservation as a liberal arts person like myself, and you can write, and you can speak, and you can uh, 
work on business plans and, and you can help in other ways. I don't think you have to have a graduate degree, although there's a number of wonderful programs, um, for example, master's programs in environmental policy or in ecological topics all over the country. And that really does help you. But I would say that it's not absolutely necessary. Now, if you are someone who dreams of studying hyenas in Africa or sharks in Florida or grizzly bears in Alaska and you want to be a biologist or ecologist or something that really is the hard sciences, then of course you're going to have to think about how you're going to get your master's and or your PhD. Um, but if you want to get a job in environmental conservation, typically most educational requirements are really just an undergraduate degree and a demonstrated interest and passion in the topic. So when I talk to people who maybe they're coming to the, the nonprofit sector from something totally different, like they worked at Clorox or they worked at Apple computer or something like that. It's okay, actually. We're, we're very open to talking to people who maybe haven't had a traditional approach to this work, but they really need to have an authentic connection to the mission. And, and if you say, I am not even sure if I'm qualified for this job, but I put my hat in and I really like what this organization is doing. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to have this phone call with you today. And I'm, I'm excited. That to me is like, it's so refreshing to have someone just be authentic and because I I'm looking at your resume. I know, you know, if it doesn't totally match, it's not like some mystery. And then we can talk about, okay, well, you don't have experience supervising, but you have a, a lot of other things. Maybe here's what I can do for you around learning how to supervise. It's something to, you can learn. How would you, would you be interested in talking about that? Then great. But how do you have experience doing something if you've never done it? Right. Maybe some people, <laughs> might volunteer in their community to do river cleanups, or they might be on the board of a local conservation organization that helps preserve waterways or works on environmental justice or climate. And so just showing me like, how am I connecting to this issue is everything. It's not enough to say I recycle or I'm interested in making the world a better place, um, but really having that, that genuine demonstrated concern for the future sustainability of our earth and if you have a graduate degree it's a wonderful thing but i i've hired a lot of people who haven't had one as well so i think it really depends on are you passionate and you want to do some more school and maybe it's okay you can go into a little more debt or you can find a way to get some of that debt covered and, and you're just so excited about it do it you know really listen to your inner energies what's what's making you excited and what's dragging you down. If it sounds like a big drag to go to graduate school and you feel like you just have to do it and it's an obligation, I would say, why spend your time doing that when you, we need you on the front lines too in conservation. Get in, get your hands dirty with us and get to work. <laughs>